and welcome. Come on in. I'm putting lotion on my hands while we're getting started here. Wendy's closing a couple of doors and uh, let us know if you have any issues with seeing or hearing. Um, but I am so happy to have you here. My name is Becky Higgins for those of you who are new and everything that we share here on social media in general, but specifically here on Facebook Live, all ties back to cultivating a good life and recording it. So sometimes we talk about one, sometimes we talk about the other. And today we are definitely talking about the recording it, the scrapbooking. And yes, I said that word. Sometimes we keep it pretty generic and say memory keeping or storytelling. But really when it comes down to it, I've been working on my kids' scrapbooks. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how I am working on the kids' albums. Um, first of all, before I dive in, Wendy, are we okay? You're okay. I don't okay. see any anything yet. And no problems. All right. Do so have people watching. Perfect. So I know that a lot of you do um, watch this back later. So that's why I don't like to stall too much in the beginning. I want to just get into the topic. For those of you who are alive and still trickling in, um, you'll catch up wherever you tune in. So this will be a lot of fun. The purpose of today's um, broadcast and what I'm hoping that you gain out of this is straight up inspiration. I hope that you leave this broadcast feeling inspired about how you might be working on or keeping up with or going back to your kids' albums or scrapbooks, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've, been, I've been diving back into this with my own kids. I'll explain the backstory in a moment. And so that's what, that's what we're going to do. The format of this discussion is live. So for those of you who are here now, um, watching as we're live, please participate as much as you want. If you have questions, ask me. But to start with, I have a whole list of questions that we gathered from what you guys and um, other people have asked on social media that I thought I will just go through these questions that you guys have already asked and just answer them. Um, so feel free to participate as much as you want. Now, Wendy is here and she's watching for your questions. So if there's anything that comes up that she notices is relevant to what we're talking about, she will interrupt me and let me know. She's also taking notes, so if I don't answer your question but you know it's a good one that I should be addressing, just hang on tight because maybe Wendy wrote it down and we'll be bringing it up in a little okay, bit. For some reason, I'm not seeing comments on oh, here, okay. but I'm seeing them here. Okay, so, so then you you probably should just refer to your phone. Okay. okay. Figuring out our little <laughs> logistical situation. All right, so let's do this. Um, context. Quick context, you really should understand this backstory if you don't already, and we do probably have a split audience. Some of you probably know exactly what I'm talking about and you've been looking forward to this conversation and some of you have no idea um, what is up. So this is what's up, is last Saturday I woke up and um, had no intentions of what ended up happening. Um, but I did wake up feeling very inspired and motivated to use some time that I had that day to pick up where I left off with working on catching up on my son's album. I have three kids, but I, I, I'm a big believer in when it comes to memory keeping, you know, besides prioritizing and figuring out what you want to do and what's important to you, that when you choose one project to work on at a time, that you put your blinders on to all the other projects and the rest of the list of the stuff that you want to do. That's not for everybody, but for me and for a lot of people, it really helps a lot for you just literally like, well, not literally, like figuratively, <laughs> put the blinders on and don't think about all the other hundred things that you want to do or you feel like you should do. And so that's what I've been doing is I'm just focusing on Porter and I've been working through, I'm not going to explain everything I've been doing, but I've been focusing specifically on one year at a time. And so that's where we are. Did you have something? Somebody was just wondering with those, all the boxes of your organization, Will the end result, will they be empty or will there always be stuff in the box? Oh, the tote the where I'm yeah. working? Yes. Okay, so the storage tote. Um, hold on. Hold that question. Let, let me answer that question first. Let me just finish explaining the context. So when I did this last Saturday and I caught up on Porter's, I think I was working on his first grade year, I ended up just sharing, I thought it was just going to be a few little things on Instagram stories. And if you know what Instagram stories is about, you know it's 10 second video clips and they go away after 24 hours. But I was doing it totally on the fly, completely unplanned. If you saw how I looked, you would know that was no plan. <laughs> and so I just did it. Well, here's the thing is that you guys were tons and, and tons of response to that. 
and so much that I thought, I don't want to lose these videos. If you guys are gaining inspiration from them and you're feeling like you're, you know, it's inspiring you in any way, then we need to keep that. So I figured out how to download the entire series of those stories. It totaled 10 minutes and we have saved it to, um, I saved it and then we put it here on Facebook. So it's here on Facebook right now and you can, you can find that video. We are also working on getting that on YouTube today in fact. And so it's not gone. It has not disappeared. Um, so if you haven't seen that 10 minute video of Instagram stories, I'm going to suggest that you watch it um, after this broadcast or in whichever order you want. So let's go ahead and go right into that question was a great one. That's a great place to start. So this storage tote, it doesn't matter which one it is. I picked it up at who knows where. I don't even know. I should have known that. Target or Walmart or I, I'm trying to think if I would have gotten it anywhere else. Probably Target or Walmart, Costco. I don't know. These are like the places that I shop. And it's just a it's a file storage tote and so each um, file has um, it's by year for my child and it's by I say by school year but my, a year in my child's life is the school year and through the summer and then the next year is that new school year plus the summer and so forth now time out before I finish answering that question this is a really important anecdote I am a visual learner and a lot of you are visual learners Today is not a visual thing. This is not a formal presentation of the system. It's not a formal um, laying out everything that I do, and that is coming. And I, so I wanna make sure you understand that if you're like, wait, what are you talking about? I, we will show you everything, and we will show pictures and video, and that's all something that I'm kind of working on. But because I'm so transparent about my own process, I want to share as I'm going along kind of what I'm working on, and that's where all of this has come about. So just know that that's coming. Um, okay, the tote. What was the question? Is the end oh, result going end to result, be yes. <laughs> the end result is that one folder at a time when I catch up on that child's year, that particular year, yes, empty, gone. The only reason I have the tote is because it's a work in progress. So the end result is that yes, there's nothing to be stored. So for example, if I get caught up on Porter's, um, he's in eighth grade right now, if I get caught up and he's done and I've, I've finished first grade, second and third all the way through, um, the eighth grade and it's caught up there's no tote for Porter there's like a little you know maybe a folder or something that I keep all of his ninth grade stuff in until I do his um, ninth grade stuff at the end of the year if that makes any sense that's freshman year it's I know ninth grade it makes him sound younger. I know I like it's freshman. freshman I know <laughs> I can't even Wendy's just reminding me how old my children are getting and <laughs> it's just what? okay we're not gonna change that subject <clears throat> um, great question Shall we go into the other ones? Yeah. There are some really, really great questions that you guys have asked. Um, and so, yeah, this is, like I said, this is not laying out everything that I do that's coming, but this is answering the questions that you are already asking because I know some of you are not waiting for any formal blog post or formal video or formal anything. You are excited and ready to dive in and I want to support you in that. So go you, go you. All right, um, how did you decide, or how do you decide if you will keep the original artwork and cut it to fit the album versus scanning versus taking photos of the album? So again, some of these questions will make more sense when you see the 10 minute video, so I'm not gonna explain everything that you should catch in that video. Um, but when it comes to my children's artwork and things that maybe not, don't necessarily fit in the album, I do get them in there by either scanning or photographing. Sometimes I cut it down. So how do I decide? Well, first of all, if it is too large, it doesn't fit in the album in its original form, 99% of the time, I'm gonna scan or photograph it, I'll explain the difference in a minute, because it doesn't fit. The exception, the 1%, would be if it is an original piece of art that I just feel like, I, I don't have to know the reasons, but if I have a feeling like this should just be something that is kept, that original piece is kept, because um, it is just so special, or it's so good, or whatever, then I, I keep it, of course I do. Um, but I want to, I want, for the most part, I want to condense. I, at the, at the end of my child's childhood, and they're, they're on to the next chapter of their life, I am pretty sure they don't want 15 boxes full of just all this stuff. So my job that I've taken upon myself as a mother and as a documenter is to condense and to bring it down. And so I am pretty certain, and I have checked with my kids about this as well, that a sampling and a small collection of their things from each year of their life is plenty. And I'm super good about that. 
sorry, that I said that wrong. I'm super good with that. I'm content with that decision. I don't feel an ounce of regret in anything that I have ever thrown away of my child's. Okay. So if you have extra photos, do you throw those away as well? Yeah. Okay. If yeah, but that's me, guys. So I don't I do not misunderstand this as here's my advice for you. This is more of just I'm just telling you what I do and I have gotten better and better um, about throwing things away. And you might think that that is like completely blasphemous that I would ever throw away a sentimental thing such as a photograph or a memento and that's not how I feel. I've really gotten uh, more hardcore about decluttering in my life and it is freeing and liberating and I feel content with that. I feel like the, left, the less stuff, I feel like I just, I can breathe a little better, you know? It just feels really good, even as a memory keeper. And you guys know that this is like running through my veins, this whole memory keeping thing. So if I can do it, and if you're feeling like you're inclined to do it, do it. If you just cringe at the thought of throwing away anything, I would never force you into that. I would never try to convince you otherwise. So keep that in mind. Um, so the difference between when I photograph and when I scan really comes down to size. If something is small enough, and when I mean small enough, I mean like an eight and a half by 11 or smaller, I can just slip a whole pile of those items in my scanner. It's called Scan Snap IX500 or something mm -hmm. by Fujitsu. And I can literally put a whole pile of, of items of different sizes in my scanner and it just runs them through like that. And I can have a whole pile scanned in no time. It's really fast. It's not a flatbed scanner, so it's different. If I have something that is too large, um, then I'm going to photograph that. Or the other reason I would photograph something is, and you would have seen this in that 10 minute video or on Instagram stories, is um, if I have like all these little pieces and I can't, I just don't want to put those through the scanner. So then I just lay them all out on like a, a whiteboard or a blackboard or something and then I take the picture and use that. So th that's a great question. I'm so, I'm so glad that you asked that because there is a, a difference. Um, Next question. Oh, someone says, so do you have both physical pages and app pages in the albums? The answer is yes. Um, if you are new to Project Life, we have it available in three different formats. There's the physical product, so that's your pocket pages and your pre-designed cards and you slip everything in the pockets, physically, like including your prints. We have the digital format, meaning you do everything on your computer using Photoshop with our um, templates, our page templates and our pre-designed art right there on your computer, and then we have the Project Life app, which is in the palm of your hand, using your mobile device, iOS or Android, we've got it all. Um, the Project Life app allows you to, with a few taps, pull your pages together. So, um, that's a brief overview. If you wanna learn more, go to um, beckyhiggins.com. You can learn everything more there, because I know we have new people all the time, so I wanted to put that out there. Um, but with my kids' albums, they are physical albums, 12 by 12, by the way, because somebody asked that question as well. They're 12 by 12. And, um, and I put, I include the envelope pages, which include their stuff, their memorabilia. I have, um, pocket pages where I cut some things down and I include it. And I also include, um, some of just a few photos, not very many because my kids' albums had become more stuff centric instead of photo centric, um, a topic I should address a little bit later. And so that's kind of how that works. Um, where was I going with that? Oh, and so, um, when I have pages that I want to add in, but I don't necessarily want to go through the extra step of printing photos and then adding them into pocket pages, I actually just make the pages right there in the palm of my hand on the Project Life app, tapity tap, order directly through the app, receive those pages, slip them in the page protectors, and include those in the albums. Again. The very same album. Yeah, the very same album. It's what we call hybrid. Mm -hmm. That's what a hybrid scrapbook looks like, is that you have some physical pages, some pages that were made digitally or through the app, print them, put them in, it, it can all go together. Once again, if you are a visual learner, this is coming for you. I am, I'm actually currently in the process of waiting for, I just ordered my prints like yesterday, the app prints for Porter's first grade year. So as soon as those come, and as soon as my prints come for, of pictures that I'm throwing into pockets, this will all make so much more sense because I will do a flip through. I will show you what I've been working on and what that looks like and how it results. People want to know if you are, is this just school or is it all the memories from that year all, for that child? All of the memories. That's a great question. And sports? Yeah. It'll be in there too. You won't create a separate album for no. sports? No. Okay. 
No, what a great question. I'm glad you're asking. I would encourage you as you're thinking about this for yourself to definitely not overthink it. However, the reason why you're asking is because you're being smart. And you're being smart because you're beginning with the end in mind, which I'm always encouraging you to do. Um, it's what I try to do. And my end in mind is that my kid's childhood um, is summed up in a handful of albums and that everything is in there as far as their life and their stories. So it is not, these are not school albums. These are not about school memories even. It's about whatever the heck is happening in their life. So when you look at Porter's first grade year, again, I'll be doing a flip through of this. You're going to see something from Christmas. You're going to see what he wore for Halloween. You're going to see uh, the awards that he got from the whatever and that little play that he was in and who his teacher was and who, what his play date, who his friends were that he had play dates with. You're going to see a picture, right? A painting of Porter's first grade um, year in his life of that age group. Now, the reason why I group it by grade instead of just saying this is when you're five years old, this is when you're six, is because that's how I chronologically can identify where he was in his life. So it's one thing to say, oh, when Porter was six, but it's another thing for me. I don't know why that is, but if I know he's in first grade or second, I just I have an easier time identifying certain things, and that was, has resulted in an easier way for me to file things as well as far as the work in progress. Great question. Um, I already answered the question about size. We're doing 12 by 12. Um, I absolutely love having physical albums for my kids specifically because even though I love the Project Life app and I do most of my scrapbooking with the app, especially for our family yearbook, the physical albums allow me to include their stuff. And where I started, you know, Porter's 14 years old, guys, so he's had a scrapbook, a very elaborate scrapbook from the beginning, a series of scrapbooks. And I used to do a lot heavier scrapbooking, um, I should say decorative scrapbooking, um, creative-based scrapbooking back when he was a baby, of course. And so he has albums kind of filled with those sort of pages. And as it's evolved, and then Project Life came about, and then I kind of set my kids' albums to the side for a little bit to focus on helping you guys, but also like just letting me kind of process what I was doing over there. I'm so glad I took that break because now that I've come back to it, I've realized that with our family yearbooks, we, I have such sufficient documentation of our family's lives, our family's life as a family, and that means representing everybody in the family, me, David, and the kids, the dogs, the friends, the trips, the work, I mean, it's all kind of in there and it's a sampling and it's so sufficient. It's so solid documentation. And every, every year when I print a family, uh, family yearbook, our kids get a copy as well. And that is the reason why I'm glad I put the kids um, albums to the side for a few years because now that I'm going back and catching up, I'm kind of just skipping the whole step of figuring out all of the pictures. They're done. They're preserved. The best of for each kid for every year is preserved in the family yearbook and I really like it that way for us. And so in the kids scrapbooks, it really is more about just their stuff and then just a few pictures that I added in, which again, the flip through will make so much more sense of all of that. Did you have something you or really we answered that question right at the end? She wanted to know how you decide what goes in the yearbook yeah. and what goes in the kids Okay, book. and actually since you're asking another great question, so let me just explain that one step further. Um, I can't wait to do the flip through. This will make so much more sense. I, I focus on the stuff, right? All the physical stuff, which was explained in that 10 minute video. If you haven't watched it, the Instagram story series. But then what I did is when I finished Porter's first grade year and I had stuff in pocket pages and I had all the other stuff, I then could look at it and go, okay, so I'm caught up, I'm done. But I do see that I have a handful of pockets in the pocket pages that are just empty. So sure, I can throw some Project Life cards in there and that'd be, that'd be fine. But it's so easy for me just to go into my photos on my computer and also accessible on my phone through Dropbox. And just go to that year and just not spend, seriously, it took me like maybe 10 minutes to do this. And I just quickly scanned and I just found random pictures of Porter, specifically him, that I like that I know are not in the family yearbook that I could include. And so I've just ordered those prints like actually this morning um, through Impix and I am re going to receive them and then that is what pictures will be included in the pockets that were left remaining. I sure hope I made sense because in my head it makes so much sense and I'm still experimenting with this and 
it's not polished yet the way I'm telling you about it because I'm being super like on the fly just sharing as I go but it's it's good it makes me feel really good because it's focused on the stuff and the memorabilia and the whatever but there's still a few pictures in there but I'm making the pictures work with the gaps that were left okay yeah the album flip the the flip through is gonna be I think where all of the light bulbs yeah. will go ding ding it's just gonna be so helpful how many books have you decided on for your kids okay that is definitely asked by a person who has been following what I'm sharing because she knows that I've talked about this idea of beginning with the end in mind and picturing when my kids leave the house, how many albums do I want them to have? Back it up from there. If I didn't do that, they would just have endless albums. Can you imagine? You have to have a U-Haul. Yeah. Yeah. That's not embarrassing at all. <laughs> Pulling up to college with a U-Haul full of scrapbooks. That's, that's totally normal. <laughs> In our family, apparently, that is. When I'm your mom, that's what you're going to get. No, actually, it's because of that, because I'm such a lifetime scrapbooker, that I was really concerned about having too many. I think there is such a thing. And I don't think that anybody wants that many scrapbooks of themselves. I think that there is such a thing as too much. Um, and in my opinion, in my opinion, not that's not a statement, it's just an opinion. Um, so this is the... This is a loaded, loaded question. Let me explain why. I decided as I was helping other people with this math concept of beginning with the end in mind and then backing it up and then, you know, if you know how many albums, whether it's one or six or 20, then you can actually do the math and go, okay, well, if 18 years of a childhood is in that many albums and you do the math and figure out how many years per scrapbook or how many pages per year or whatever, it's such basic, simple math, but it helps. It helps because you put boundaries around your system and then and then you realize oh this is totally doable because I only have for example 10 pages per year well I can t I can do that right um, so I did answer that question for myself once upon a time and I said you know what feels like a good number about this many albums I kind of visually went like that well that's six six albums and that is and that was my like okay six six albums 18 years 18 divided by six means three years of their life per album 60 pages fit in an album so 60 divided by 3 is 20 so that means 20 pages per year easy breezy beautiful cover girl okay so <laughs> so in my mind I'm like this is genius I've got it figured out and you guys I do have it figured out but not for Porter it's figured out for crew who has like nothing you feeling better about yourself right now yeah my eight-year-old has like nothing Wait till you wait until I catch up on his from the beginning. I mean, how great is that, right? The creator of Project Life has like nothing done for her baby boy who's eight. Well, that's what I was just saying. It's too late. It's been three no. years, and no. somebody else is like, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. So the reason why it's a loaded question, I just to finish my thought, and and you'll appreciate this. Is six albums is great if you do the math from the beginning, and that's totally gonna work for for Crew, my younger son, but Porter has a mom who scrapbooks for a living and who loves this so much, right? So he has like three albums by the time he hit preschool. <laughs> so that kind of messed with my math. That's why it's a loaded question. So I'm gonna come back to you with that answer once I've adjusted. <laughs> right now I'm in catch up mode and I decided instead of putting a number of pages that I'm gonna do for his first grade year, my goal was just condense it as much as you can. And so when we do that video flip through, you're going to see how many pages, whether it's this many or this many, you're going to see how it came together and how I plan to go forward, um, condensing onward, onward and upward. Um, okay. For those of you who are new to that concept though, do the math, begin with the end in mind, figure out how to do this. You know, for those of you who, who let's just talk about the person who said she's like, Her name is Julie. Hey Julie. So you've got a 30 year old or something, mm -hmm. right? Something like that. Definitely not too late. This is what I would suggest without knowing you, without knowing your situation, without knowing your child. My suggestion would be touch base with your child. Let's say Wendy was my child. <laughs> that makes sense. I would say, hey, Wendy, I really want to catch up on your scrapbook. I want to condense your whole child into, into something manageable. I feel like one album would be good. What do you think about that? So then that gives my child, that gives Wendy a chance to say, um, mom, that would be amazing. I would love an album. Thank you so much. Or she might go, it feels like you're jipping me a little bit. And maybe if you could just do two or three albums, I would feel like I have more of my stories recorded. And then we can compromise and talk through that. But my suggestion would be just start with an album, one 12 by 12 album. 
60 pages, if you don't add a bunch of bulk, 60 pages is what fits in an album. You can get a big pack of 60 page protectors or 60 photo pocket pages from our shop, shopbeckyhiggins.com, um, or I think some of the big box retailers and, and many independent retailers that carry Project Life also have those. That is why there are 60 pages in a box, because I did the math, okay? <laughs> so when you do that, and let's say you wanna get his whole childhood or her, chi her whole childhood in an album, then you realize 18 years divided by 60, you just get out there a little calculator and figure out, oh, it's only a handful of pages per year. Then you go back through their pictures, wherever they are, there are probably a lot of them already printed, and you only pick the best of, and you just put together a few simple pages per year. But you limit yourself, and that's what makes it so doable. Secret to scrapbooking success right there. She just wants to come to her house. She has lots of food for you. Oh, I would come, Julie. She wrote me yesterday and said, come to my house, I have food. <laughs> Where do you live, Julie? Oregon. We might come. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about food. And Mindy Weeball says, I'm in Oregon also. Come on. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> we should make a trip to Oregon. Yeah, we should. That would Beautiful. be fun. Yeah, I honestly, if I didn't you know, have other responsibilities in my life in general, I would just travel city to city to city to just be in your homes. <laughs> To not only eat your food, I, but that I, would be your dream. That would to go and their help. Food? No, that would be my dream. <laughs> your dream is to go and help each individual it person. Is. It is. Winnie knows that about me. I would love nothing more than to just forget about my inbox and all the other, you know, contracts and legal stuff and all the responsibilities of running a business. And I would seriously just be in all of your homes, just helping you <laughs> one at a time and eating your food. <laughs> I would right. love that. And Wendy would be right there with me. Yes. Um, okay. Oh, could you share a flip through of one of their albums? Shortest answer of the whole broadcast. Yes. That is coming. Um, do you use your phone or DSLR for taking photos? Brilliant question. Two-part answer. Number one, just in case you're asking about just my everyday picture taking, because I think, I don't know if you're asking about that or if you're asking about when I'm catching up on the kids' albums and taking pictures of their artwork and things like that. In my life, just on a day-to-day -day basis, I 100% use my iPhone. I used to say 90%, 95%, 99%. I can't remember the last time I got my DSLR out now. It's 2017, I don't remember when that switch officially happened, but I mean, gosh, for the last couple of years, I really just don't get my DSLR out. So I might sell it, actually. I was talking to Miriam, our photographer about that the other day and I really might sell my camera which seems crazy but I literally never use it so that's part number one to your answer or to your question um, answer number two or um, uh, the second version of how you have asked that question or how I want to answer it is that when I'm taking pictures of the kids stuff which again you got to watch that 10 minute video because I, I actually show you how I like set it up and walk you through how I do it, what it looks like. It's, it's as if you're right there with me. Um, I 100% take those pictures with my iPhone. So in other words, there's not any reason in my life that I can think of that I've actually used a DSLR lately, which is kind of neat. You guys, we have this technology with amazing optics in our phones that are in our pockets, and that's what's taking all of our pictures. Mm -hmm. So cool. Uh, next question, what types of writing samples do you save as your kids get older? Great question. That is something that is just like, it's such an individual thing. Just look at their stuff. Look at their school stuff. Look at the notes they pass to their friends. Do kids do that anymore? Or did we just do that well, in Well, I think school? I think you know today. That's true. So yeah. It's come, I think it's coming back. Maybe that's back in style. It's like trendy because it's vintage. <laughs> Imagine that that's like it is though it is vintage isn't it mm -hmm. I regularly regularly write handwritten notes so to me like the the art of handwriting notes is not lost on me for sure but I guess in society that's less and less of a thing so yes anything that you can get your hands on that your kids have handwritten um, just find anything having said that having said that if you have kids that are old enough and they have phones teenagers and you text with them or whatever, screenshot some of those text conversations. I bet you've got some gems. Like, yeah, oh yeah. I don't know how often you're our screenshotting. family text is hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In fact, some of our team texts are kind of yeah. funny, huh? So yeah, like whoever you text with, 
especially those that you text on a regular basis, it definitely get some screenshots once in a while. Even if it's just one screenshot once in a blue moon, it's something. And it's not just the conversation, but it's the fact that we text today. That's how we communicate. That is so right now. And in 20 years, it's probably going to be different. And how cool would that be to see and remember what that was like? We're getting off on so many tangents, but it's all, it's all good. It's all memory keeping. Um, okay. Do you not use the school albums you designed when Porter was little with the 12 by 12 plastic folders for each year? This is from a long time customer. Most people watching probably <laughs> don't even know what we're talking about, but back in the day, back before I created Project Life, I worked for Creating Keepsakes Magazine. I was their editor for 12 years, um, but I also got into product development. And one of the products that I developed was a whole kit that had for the entire 12 years of school or actually beyond um it had everything all the pieces and parts and so which is great i know some of you are like wait do that it's not as simple as it seems and it was an awesome kit i'm glad to know that some of you still have that but it's not pocket scrapbooking it's not it's still not easy enough i think for mainstream people who want to do it um but yeah no i'm not using that i used it when i made it i for sure was like oh this is it but you guys have to remember that that was pre the concept of Project Life. That was pre me figuring out that there's an easier way that helps us to get scrapbooking done without cutting, without gluing, without being creative, without piecing things together. And so, yeah, no, I don't use those, but I know a lot of people have used them and I'm so glad. No matter what, no matter how you do it, no matter how you get it done, no matter if you're doing pocket scrapbooking or digital scrapbooking or creative traditional scrapbooking or what are some of those other um, smash booking or if you're printing chat books or no matter what your approach is, the point is to get it done. So like just whatever floats your boat, whatever helps you get these memories preserved is the best way to do it. Connect with the way that you feel like it makes sense for you. That's what I want you to do. Do that. I'll tell you what I'm doing, what works for me. But at the end of the day, you got to do what works for you. Um, what photos do you add to these albums and how do you include them? Oh, I kind of answered that. Mm -hmm. I kind of explained that with this now, this new format, it's more about the stuff, not the photos. So I don't print the photos first. It's actually the very last thing I do in each year of my child's catching up is I see which, which gaps or what gaps I have, um, which pockets are empty. And then I print photos and slip them in. And I, I say that as if I've been doing that. I just ordered those prints this morning that I'll be slipping into Porter's first grade year. And as soon as I have my app prints from the Project Life app, and I have these four by six and some other sizes that I ordered through Impix, I'm gonna put it all together to say that his year is completely done and then I'll do the video flip through. That'll be so fun. Um, how do you scrapbook other things like scouts, baptism, sports? Um, do you just mix them in amongst the school things? I did already address that, but just in case you're coming Mention in. Mention again because somebody asked Oh, again. perfect. Yeah. If you're coming in later, that is absolutely what I do is I mix it all together. So this is the perspective I want you to keep in mind. Imagine not being in the thick of this now. And when I say in the thick, I don't mean that you're actually doing it. Maybe you're just thinking about it. You're watching this. You're pondering like, should I do this or should I do that? I need you to like, get out of the the trenches of the right now. And I want you just to go like 10 years down the road. And I want you to imagine that you and your child are sitting together on the couch and you're looking through the scrapbook, right? Do you think that you or your child will care if things are in perfect chronological order? No, I don't think that you will. Do you think that you will care if some of the pages are photo slipped into pockets? or if they were created in the app and then printed and put in page protectors, not sure you're gonna care about that either. In other words, what's gonna really matter at the end of all of this and you know, generations from now is just that the memories are there, the stories are told, it's all there. So don't get so hung up in the order and the chronology and the what's included or what's not, just, just do it, just get some stuff in there. So going back to the question about what you include, I just decided that this, these childhood albums, I decided this a long time ago, but the, these childhood albums would not be a separation of here's your sports life and here's your church life and here's your friend's life and here's your school life. This is your life, honey. This is it. It's all here and it's all part of who you are and what makes you you. And so 
there it is. And I, and I just don't overthink it. But that's one of my, I've decided that's one of my talents is to not overthink certain things right. <laughs> in scrapbooking. It is a talent. Um, but it's probably yours too and you don't realize it. Tap into that talent. All right. Um, next question. I got to find out where I was. Um, hold on. Got that. Oh, ooh. Why do you photograph kids' art with a black background instead of white? So funny that you should ask that question. This is really funny because when you say, why do you do that? What you don't know is I've never done that before, <laughs> ever. So here's how that worked out. My daughter is in the thick of her science fair project. It's due next week. So when I was doing this last Saturday and jumped on Instagram stories and like off the hip just started sharing all the stuff that I was doing with Porter's album, I just happened to see in the corner that black um, presentation board that we had just picked up at Michael's the night before that was sitting there. And I'm like, that'd probably be a good background. I put it down. I'm like, yeah, black would look good. Like, I just didn't think about it. I just, it's not... It's not something that you should overthink. However, it how, did look at color pop, though. It I did. Like yeah. It did, and so that's something to think about. I think white is clean. It's sharp. Yeah. It's fresh. But whites can be funky. If you don't have good natural light coming in, and you don't know how to do simple edits with those photos in your phone, I recommend Pick Tap Go. I love them. Um, then you're gonna get some gray tones and some pink tones and some yellow tones. So if you're kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing, I just wanna take a good picture, black is great. Black is great, it's stark, it, like Wendy was saying, it helps the, the items on the black backgrounds really pop. Um, it's also really easy to get it right. You can't screw up black. You just, it can't, whites are tricky because I was talking about the tones, but um, if you don't use black and if you don't use white, the other thing I would recommend is just a simple, solid, neutral carpet or floor whatever your floor is. What I don't recommend is a busy pattern background. If you can avoid that, it would be advantageous because what happens is then it, it distracts from the actual items. So if you're dropping your kid's art on the ground um, or if you're dropping it on grandma's quilt, that's great. Grandma's quilt is probably really special, but it becomes a, a, like a visual fight. Your eyes don't know where to look, the, the really pretty quilt or the, the artwork. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a visual psychological thing that the simpler you have your background, the more you're able to focus on the art. So anyway, so that's kind of a funny story of why it's black because it was an accident, but I'm kind of digging it a lot. In fact, if you look at Instagram stories today, I actually shared one of our customers saw what I did and she did it. She photographed it on black. She did it in the app with a black background because oh. you can change your background all color. Black. Yeah, so it's literally all black. So it almost looks like she just put all these pieces of art on one big black background, which is really cool. Um, gosh, I got through all the questions. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And people are just asking again about, um, that maybe missed it earlier, about what do you do with pictures you don't use? So if they're on your phone, talk about the daily delete. Oh, yeah. Pictures you don't use. I will talk about that. Um, oh, I was just going to, I'm trying to remember the name. Oh, yeah. I remember the name of, of the blog post, too. Okay. So we all have more pictures than we'll ever use and that we ever should use, right? But that doesn't mean that we have to like delete them all. It just means that we're gonna cherry pick and you know choose the best of to preserve or to share or whatever. So when it comes to digital, if you're cherry picking, you're only doing such and such with these pictures and the rest. My personal take on that is you just let them be, the, the rest of them just let them be, make sure they are backed up. Um, if you go to our blog at beckyhiggins.com, do a search for backup because we've blogged about that. We've shared. In fact, I think we did a Facebook Live. Oh, well, um, with Kevin and Tony. That's what I'm thinking of, but next week. Well, and Kevin did a whole thing about Google Photos, which talks about backing up. Um, Race did that or, blog post. Race, yes, 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 yeah. Yes. But, Kevin, but Kevin and Tony worked together on it. So anyway, if you go to um, our blog, search backup on there, but also on our YouTube channel, you can search backup because we've talked about backing up lots of times. And in fact, I believe, if I remember correctly, our next Facebook Live broadcast is actually going to be about that very specific topic. Don't quote me on that, but we'll do a social media share and let you know really soon when that is because we need to talk more about it. Um, but back to, back to the question and where we left off is with your digital files, I don't believe that it's necessary to go through and delete. There's no point in that. Just make sure they're backed up. But there's something that I've done that has changed my life. <laughs> 
um, that has really helped me. Speaking of decluttering and feeling like it's okay to let go of certain things, I do something that's called a daily delete. And I will not go into full explanation here because it's all laid out in a beautiful and visual blog post, again, at beckyhiggins.com and on the blog sidebar, um, search um, resolutions. That's the name of that blog post where I talk about that at the beginning of this year. That was one of the resolutions I talked about. The short version is that every day I take less than five minutes. I go through my camera roll of that day, no matter what pictures I took, and I delete every single day. Not everything. I, only, I keep the gems. I keep the ones I know are special to me or that I think I might like to use one day or whatever. But there are definitely pictures, screenshots. Um, just quick things that ended up in my camera roll for whatever reason and I eliminate and delete them every single day and it's not a big project it's not a big project because it's a part of my daily regimen so I just do it as a part of my routine and I feel so much less overwhelmed about just my photos in general because they're not I'm not swimming in them I don't have 10,000 photos on my phone phone ever yeah so great question was there anything else um, I think you covered a lot, yeah. covered a lot. And if you have questions, um, you can put them in the comments here on Facebook. I will try to answer a few of them, but really what I'm excited for, like this is just conversation and this is just my head, but really when I, when I get those prints back and I put them in the album, I want to physically walk you guys through what that resulted as and how it looks. And then really, I just expect light bulb moments. I really, I think that some things will just start clicking for a lot of you and that makes me so excited. So I'm looking forward to that day. I don't think I have anything else. So we're going to jump off of Facebook live. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will definitely let you know for sure on the, the day and the time of our next Facebook live broadcast, but we do this just about every week. So we're here, we're talking about different topics. Real quick, the yeah. asked a couple of times, you don't print at home. No, nope, right? I don't print at home. I'm glad yeah. that people are asking. I don't print at home and we can actually wrap up on that note. Um, speaking of printing, I was just talking with the team this morning about how I want to be able to um, recommend to you guys who I use for printing. But here's the funny thing is I haven't printed in a while because of the Project Life app. All of my printing happens in the Project Life app and they're usually the full completed pages, which means I don't have to print photos before I scrapbook. That's kind of the beauty of the Project Life app. I love it. I dig it. Now that I'm back into catching up with my children's albums and I'm printing a few pictures per year, just a few, just a handful, like maybe a dozen at the most that I'm printing and just kind of slipping into those extra pockets, I want to be able to recommend to you a really good printer that I'm using. You guys can chime in here with your favorites. I'm sure that everyone has a favorite if you're already in printing mode, but I'm experimenting right now and, and who I tried ordering through this morning, I keep hearing that MPix is really great. I have no affiliation with them, but I hear that they're really, really good and I wanted to try them out. So I'm gonna let you know how that goes. My ordering process was great, it was easy, um, and I'm waiting for the prints to arrive and I'll let you know what I think of the quality. Otherwise, I know there's lots of other great printers out there. Feel free to chime in with your opinions on that so that other people can glean from you as well. So they're doing that. So. Great, good. Good, awesome. All right, you guys, thank you for being here. Thanks for being a part of this community. It sure is awesome to brainstorm with you guys, share what we're doing, hear what you're doing. This is what we do, right? We're just helping each other to cultivate a good life and record it, and it's so much fun. We'll see you next time. Bye.